Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Scappy, and I work on the education team at the National Hemophilia Foundation. It is my pleasure to welcome you to NHF's Super 7 Storytime series. Super 7 is a children's book targeted to kids ages 8 to 12 with ultra rare bleeding disorders, but everyone will find something to enjoy. The series will include various bleeding disorder community members who share a little bit about themselves and read a chapter from the book. Now, if you can join us during NHF's pajama book launch party, please watch the party on our YouTube channel where Dr. Len Valentino reads the first chapter of the book. Also, please note every week NHF will publish a new video with a chapter reading from the book Super 7 for you to watch on your own time. And you'll notice our guests are in our pajamas, and we encourage you to watch these in the evening in your pajamas too. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome our next guest of story, the Storytime series, Rich Pizzillo. Hey, Nicole, good to see you. So good to see you as well. We're so grateful that you're here joining us today. But before we actually read chapter three, I want the audience to learn a little bit more about you. So I'll start with an easy question. First is what state are you from? Yeah, great question. I am from the great state of Rhode Island. It may be the smallest state in the country, but we have a little trivia for you. Over 400 miles of coastline. Um, so tiny state, it's only 37 miles north to south, 42 miles east to west, but over 400 miles of coastline. My goodness, I had no idea there was so much coast there. I think I might have to go to Rhode Island. Come on down, the price is right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm gonna move on to another question. And if you're comfortable answering, feel free to, but do you mind sharing your community affiliation? Absolutely. Uh, so I have hemophilia A, which is factor eight deficiency. Uh, it's been in my family. My grandfather had it, my brother has it, my cousin has it, my mom's a carrier. Um, and I am also the executive director of the New England Hemophilia Association. Oh, so you have quite a few community connections. So great, so great. Well, with that, I'm switching it up again, and I'm asking you a super important question. What is your favorite food or snack? Uh, the most important question here. My favorite food has to be, hands down, peanut butter. I love anything to do with peanut butter. I am the guy that will eat it out of the jar. Sometimes I like putting it on things, but give me all the peanut butter in the world, and I am a happy guy. So it sounds like a good day for you is a big spoon and a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> Makes me happy. It's my happy place. <laughs> good to know. Well, if I ever see you, I'll bring you some peanut butter from PA and we'll see if you like it. I will. I will happily take that and then give you a big <laughs> hug after COVID uh, to say thank you. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, I'm going to switch it up one more time here before we get into our reading. And my last question is, why is the book Super 7 important to you? Yeah, it's a great question. The book Super 7 is important because the rare bleeding disorder community for such a long time has not only needed a voice, but has needed additional resources. This book is so crucial to ensure that all those living with a rare bleeding disorder not only has a place, but can feel connected. And I think very often books give that connection, give that way of community. Um, and I just want to thank NHF, you in particular, and for so many others who put this uh, awesome book together. Oh my goodness. Well, that just warms my heart. And I don't know if I have a better response to that amazing answer. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And with that, I think I'd like to pass it off to you to read us the third chapter of Super 7. Rich, would you do us the honors? Absolutely. I'm so excited for this. Thanks so much, Nicole. After three, my parents told me that having a bleeding disorder is really rare. Rarer than being double-jointed, left-handed, or having red hair. Rarer than having two different colored eyes. I've never met anyone with two different colored eyes. Cats don't count. I've never met anyone else with a bleeding disorder, although I know they're out there. Bleeding disorders are usually passed down from parents to kids but not always because it was a big surprise when I was born and the doctors told my parents I had one. It means my blood doesn't clot that well. When a kid who doesn't have a bleeding disorder bangs an arm into a locker or slips off a curb and twists an ankle a tiny bit, they say, ow, or forget about it. Not me though. I wind up with huge bruises or my ankles start to bleed on the inside. 
And instead of bleeding for just a little bit and then stopping, mine just keeps going. Then the joint is full of blood and hurts, which is what happened a few days ago because of Victoria. Dad cleared away the breakfast dishes. Okay, we need to get moving, Tanner, he said. Get your super juices supplies. Mom and dad called my medicine super juice even now. They started calling it when I, they started calling it that when I was really little, when it was hard to get me to sit still and when they gave me my medicine. The needle hurts a bit and back then. It bothered me a lot more. Anyway, I don't mind that. They sometimes forget and call it my super juice once in a while, as long as they never ever say it in front of anyone else. I reach for the plastic three drawer organizer where we keep all my bleeding disorder infusion supplies. I have to inject my medicine into a vein in my arm. It's called infusing. That's why the organizer looks like something you'd see in a doctor's office. Boxes of latex gloves, butterfly needles, plastic tubes, a couple of tourniquets, alcohol wipes, and plastic tubs to put the used needles in. I opened one drawer and then another, taking out a syringe, a butterfly needle, my favorite dark blue tourniquet, a couple of alcohol swabs, a band-aid, a pair of gloves, and my infusion mat. I grabbed a small box of my super juice from the fridge. The medicine is actually blood clotting factor, the stuff my body is missing. I normally only infuse every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help prevent bleeds from happening. But because I have an active bleed from when I twisted my ankle, I needed one every day to help it heal. I washed my hands at the sink and wiped down the mat with an alcohol swab. I had to pay attention to what I was doing so I didn't forget a step, but it was so routine, it was difficult to focus. Show the picture right there. Plus the game. As I slipped on the latex gloves, my mind kept flitting around. Play? Not play. My stomach clenched. I hated that I even had to make this choice. Stupid Victoria. Stupid bleed. Stupid disorder. Stupid. Okay, I'm ready, I told dad. He glanced over and looked at the setup. Nice, he said. He watched while I put on the tourniquet, tightening it around my upper arm. The dark blue one was my favorite because it didn't pinch. I clenched my fist that made my veins easier to see and laid my arm flat on the table with my wrist facing up. I picked up the butterfly needle, inserted it into my vein like I had been taught, like an airplane lands, slowly plunged the factor into my body, drew out the needle and threw it into the plastic tub. I stuck a Band-Aid over my tiny pinprick. Factor, do your stuff, I said. I'll show the picture one more time there. And that is chapter three. And I'm still muted. Thank you so much, Rich. Again, that was fantastic. And if you guys are curious what's going to happen next week in chapter four, you have to join us then to hear from another community member. And with that, before we say goodbye, Rich, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us for story time tonight. And I want to thank all of you for attending and we will see you next week. Great. Thank you. Good night, everyone.